Hey guys, Rikasa here, and today we're going to talk about some balance adjustment changes coming on October 5th for New Genesis. A lot of these are long overdue. We haven't gotten changes like this in months, as far as I can recall, but we're going to be getting adjustments for every single class, and I believe almost every single weapon. But we're going to go through these one by one and kind of see how much of this is going to actually change or impact the game. So first off, we're going to talk about the Hunter class. Uh, there's a few class skill changes here, such as the Hunter Arts Perfect Parry, where they extend the time which attacks are negated when using a Photon Art, making it easier to actually pull off this Perfect Parry, which is pretty nice. And then they increase the potency of Assault Charge and Partisan Parry Alternate Assault. So it looks like with these two, they're trying to make Assault Charge more usable, but we don't exactly know how much of an increase this potency is going to be. Then for Sword Adjustments, we have a few things. So enabled left right movement in steps one to four of the sword normal attacks as long as you're in the air. So what that means is you can move left and right slightly instead of just going straight towards the enemy. So a little bit more movability there and then increased uh, the potency of the step five of the sword normal attack. With the step five, you can do left right movement already. So that's why it's not included there. Uh, and then extended guard points in all directions of step five for the sword normal attack. Guard points are basically just points in the PA where it blocks uh, attack coming at you, so it negates the damage. So this is just an extension of that, so it extends the period of when that guard can occur. And then we have for the sword photon blast, increased potency and attack range. Here it says photon blast, like with an S, so multiple, but I'm pretty sure that's just a text error and we won't be like getting another photon blast for the weapons. And then there's some adjustments to the sword photon arts where all of them get increased potency, uh, but then a couple here get the relaxed cancellation timing for both charge and uncharged weapon actions. So what that means you just have a bigger window to cancel the said attacks. And then for relentless cleave here, it enables left and right movement for the attacks and also removes attack potency attenuation over distance. So what that means is that there's no longer going to be an attack difference based off how far away you are from when you're attacking the enemy. So there won't be like less damage farther away. And also for Relentless Cleave, they'll be adding guard points in all directions or specifically just the charged attacks. But then we move on to the Wired Lance where there's a whole bunch of changes as well. So for the first one here, we have added a period of invulnerability and guard points in all directions to step four of the Wired Lance normal attacks. The same for the weapon action when performing the forward facing variant attack. The difference between a period of invulnerability and guard points is that with a period of invulnerability, you're not actually blocking the attack. The attack kind of just goes through you momentarily. But if that attack continues even after your iframes, then you'll take damage. But with a guard point, you actually block the attack. So later on, if it would say hit you in the same attack, then it won't do any damage. But with these two things, not exactly sure when they're going to apply during these attacks. Regardless, though, you're going to be pretty safe when using them. And then we have increased potency of the rear facing variant attack of the weapon action. So just more damage there. Uh, added a period of iframes or invulnerability to the rear facing thing as well. Uh, and then also increase potency and attack range of the Photon Blast. This is going to be a pretty common occurrence, I believe, throughout the entire list. So because of that, I think Photon Blast is just going to be way more impactful for all weapons in general. So it's going to be really nice for the attack range for, like, mobbing, and then, of course, the potency for just everything in the game. But then for the Photon Arts here, Vein Mixture is getting increased potency, and then Hellish Fall is getting that invulnerability and guard points in all directions for the uncharged version. Then we have the last Hunter Weapon Partisan, where it gets a number of changes too, where it enables the left-right movement, just the same as Sword, for the step 1 to 3 of the normal attacks when you're in the air. And then for the step four, it gets quite a few changes where it gets more potency, extended attack range, and extended guard points in all directions. Then there's something interesting with the weapon action where you can generate a period of invulnerability upon a successful guard. So depending on how many frames that is, it could be very nice. And then of course, the photon blast buffs as well with the potency and attack range. And then for the photon arts, it's pretty simple, just increased potency across the board. So with Hunter here, right out the gate, once these are implemented, I think you'll notice the difference because it's just a whole bunch of survivability with the different guard points and iframes. 
and then the increased potency for almost all the different attacks, and then even some movement changes with that left and right stuff with the aerial attacks. Moving on to the next class though, we have Fighter, and first off with its class skill adjustments, we have Acceleration Drive, the dagger skill, where you get a period of invulnerability now, so that's pretty nice. And then with the double saber counters, you'll get increased movement distance, so how far you can actually go with those attacks. And for the Twin Dagger adjustments, they updated the Twin Dagger's weapon action to generate a period of invulnerability upon a successful guard. So this would actually be pretty nice to put together with Acceleration Drive, since you can do that guard, and then right after you can do that Acceleration Drive, so if another attack is coming in, you'll just have iframes for that. Then we have the same stuff with the Photon Blast per usual, but then also all these things for the Photon Arts, where it gets increased potency for every single one, with adjusted potency allocation across the attack. But also for Helsius Coat here, they changed up the Shockwave portion of the attack to where it gets expanded attack range, and also improved it so where it can hit multiple enemies. And then we have Double Saber. So for the first thing, we have extended guard points in all directions for the Step 4 of the normal attacks, but then we have increased movement distance of the weapon action. So just even more movement distance, just like you would get with the counters. So that's pretty interesting to see there. And then the stuff with the Photon Blast, but also a difference here is that it will enable player movement during the said Photon Blast. So when it is occurring, you can move it around to adjust and attack different enemies, or if the boss is like moving away from you. Then we have a couple changes to the Double Saber's Photon Arts, where Unchained Circle gets an expanded attack range, and also some uh, extended guard points of the second half in all directions. And then with Quick Gash, there will be a period of iframes to both the first and second half of the attack. And then we have Knuckles here, to where we get extended guard points in all directions for the Step 5, as well as a relaxed hit stop for it. So what a relaxed hit stop means is usually when an attack hits you during a guard point, you kind of stop briefly. So with this, that means that stop is actually lessened so it doesn't last as long. And then for the rest of it, it's pretty simple, just the PB stuff, and then increased potency and adjusted potency allocation for some of the Photon Arts here. So with Fight here, just like Hunter, you get a whole bunch of massive changes in terms of survivability and your attacks. What I thought was interesting though is that they did not increase the potency of really any of the PAs for Double Saber, and I thought Double Saber needed it the most, since I thought Twin Daggers and Knuckles were more of the damaging weapons. But now we move on to Ranger, and then for its class skill adjustments, it's just to the Blight Rounds, where it gets increased motion speed. I believe this is increased animation speed, but it could also be projectile, not exactly sure on that. But then with the regular Blight Round, there's relaxed cancellation timing, for the weapon action, and then mitigated drop timing for the launcher variant. For assault rifle adjustments, there's a whole bunch of changes to its weapon actions, to where it updated then vulnerability duration activation timing for it, and then updated it to extend the duration upon a successful dodge, relax the attack cancellation timing, and also the sidestep and weapon action cancellation timing for these as well. Then also sped up the variant timing with the grenader skill, for the weapon action, and then mitigated the drop for the weapon action when enemies are within a certain range. So a whole bunch of different changes to just make everything more relaxed and easier to pull off. And then of course the Photon Blast changes with increases there, uh, but then we have the Photon Arts. So with these they have a whole bunch of different adjustments, but for the most part it's a whole bunch more relaxed cancellation timing either with sidesteps or the weapon action, but also you can jump in the instant that you start charging some of these attacks. So Raising Shot, uh, Revolt Aim, and Homing Darts. But for Raising Shot specifically, it gets reduced Photon Power Cost, and then uh, with Homing Darts, it increases the potency and the adjusts it across the board. Uh, and then for Blaze Shot, it also adjusts the potency allocation, but also extends the iframe duration. And now we move on to the launcher adjustments, which have a lot of the similar relaxed cancellation timing. So all throughout the launcher's normal attacks, uh, as well as each of the different photon arts, either adding it or relaxing it as well, like in multi-launch or divine impact. And uh, with the Photon Blast stuff, the same thing with the increased potency and expanded attack range. But when it comes to the photon arts, uh, with Fear Racer, increased turning speed when starting and while attacking, so you can move from side to side easier, and then also added a forward point guard 
to when you're finishing the attack, so that final blast. And then with multi-launch, increased potency, and then added a period of invulnerability and a forward guard point when you finish the attack as well. Uh, and then divine impact added a forward guard point to both the charged and uncharged attacks and relax the hit stop when attacked by an enemy while performing an uncharged attack. So overall for Ranger here, unlike Fighter and Hunter, it seems like they've been trying to reduce the animation lock and getting stuck in all the different attacks by relaxing all of these cancellation timings. So making it way easier to use and more fluid overall. And now we move on to Gunner, which looks like it has a small list here, but don't forget that it also includes all those assault rifle changes since that's also a Gunner weapon. But for its class skills, there's Rising Drive, which gets a period of invulnerability, and then the Stylish Roll Counter Bullet has relaxed attack angles and adjusted the position where attacks activate to make it easier to hit moving enemies. That's pretty nice, but then for the twin machine gun adjustments, it gets the same photon blast stuff here. And then for the photon arts with bullet rave, this gets a forward guard point and a period of invincibility to both charged and uncharged attacks. And then with aimless rain, it gets an expanded attack range. So with gunner here, there isn't a whole lot to it, except for a little bit more survivability and then just ways to make it easier to hit different enemies. And then the thing I noticed is that down here in Bullet Rave, this is a period of invincibility, while most of the time it's been saying a period of invulnerability. I don't think there's a difference here, but if there was, then like you could be just like unkillable in Bullet Rave for a tiny period of time for some reason, but I don't think that's the case. Then we have Force, which probably has the least amount of adjustments out of all of the classes. So for Rod, the only change is increased potency to its photon blast, and that is it. Then when it comes to Talus, there's a extended invulnerability duration for its weapon action, and then updated the weapon action to extend invulnerability duration upon a successful dodge. And then increased the potency and attack range of the Photon Blast, and then adjusted the effect indicating when the end of the duration of the deployed Talus effect is drawing near to make it easier to recognize when that's going to happen. So with Force here, I think this is completely fine. They didn't really need many adjustments anyways, since they've been dominating in terms of mobbing and been doing quite well in terms of bossing. Now we move on to Tector though, which also gets all of these Talus adjustments, but also all of these Wand ones. At the top of the list, we got increased movement distance for steps one through three of normal attacks, increased motion speed for step three, and also a forward guard point for step three normal attacks and then extended guard points in all directions in step four. But then we get a few things for the weapon action where it gets increased movement distance, extends the guard receptive period for it, so extends that kind of guard, and then updated the wand weapon action to generate a period of invulnerability upon a successful guard. And then for Photonic Fury, it gets an expanded attack range and increased fuse technique gauge accumulation, and then also there's relaxed cancellation timing of weapon actions, for wand technique activations. For the photon blast, there's actually more things than just potency and expanded attack range. It also gets increased movement speed and increased turning performance during it. For the two wand photon arts though, we have a whole bunch more things to that. So with swift smash, there's increased potency, relaxed cancellation timing for the sidestep, and also for the weapon action. And then it has increased movement distance for both the charged and uncharged attacks when enemies are within a certain range. And then added a forward guard point to both the charged and uncharged attacks. And then with that, there's a relaxed hit stop when attacked by an enemy during a charged attack. But then for Wave Crash, it also gets increased potency and then relaxed sidestep and weapon action cancellation timing. But then it gets something interesting where it adds an effect to prevent launch and knockback during the activation motion. And then when activated on the ground, aerial markers will no longer appear after the attack. So I'm not exactly sure what these aerial markers are, but I imagine this is more of just a cosmetic change. But overall, with Tector here and just Wand in general, it seems there's going to be massive changes underway for this. Just helping out with the movement, increasing the damage, making it more smooth with the relaxed cancellation timing. Just overall, just way better. 
but it kind of depends on how much these increases are when this update actually drops. Then we have Braver. So for Katana, there isn't like any changes. It's mainly just towards its Photon Blast. So potency, attack range, and travel distance all increased. It sucks to see just this as this is my main weapon, but it's understandable as Katana has actually gotten the most balanced changes throughout the game. But with Bow here, there's a lot more. With this, there's relaxed sidestep cancellation and weapon cancellation for both the charged and uncharged normal attacks. And then there's an extended invulnerability duration for the weapon action, mitigated drop for the weapon action when enemies are within a certain range, and then also increased potency for its photon blast. And for the photon arts, there is relaxed cancellation for both the sidesteps and weapon actions across the board. But when it comes to frenzied firework, there's an expanded attack range when it's charged. And then for dimensional ray, there's reduced time to charge. So with Braver here overall, there isn't a whole bunch in terms of adjusting its damage, but it didn't really need that anyways. It's mainly just focusing on bow and making that smoother to use. And then moving on to Bouncer, this class also didn't get a whole lot done to it, but uh, for its class skill, Blade Arts Parry got relaxed attack angles. For Soaring Blades, it's just PB changes. For Jet Boots, PB changes and increased potency to three of its Photon Arts. And that is it. Overall, with Bouncer, though, it didn't really need much changes as it already felt like a pretty good class, but it is kind of sad to see that Soaring Blades didn't get as many changes as I thought it would. Now we have the final class though, Waker, and it has a few adjustments as well. So with its class skills, Linear Drive and Linear Drive Encore, it gets an extended invulnerability duration. It's not much in terms of the class skills, but with Harmonizer adjustments, they added cancellation timing for sidestep and weapon action for the normal attacks when attacking by holding down the button. Then they updated the weapon action to generate a period of invulnerability upon a successful guard. And then they adjusted the sound effect for when you do a successful guard to make it easier to recognize that you're doing so. And then, of course, they increased potency to its Photon Blast. And then for its PAs, Frederick Riding gets an added period of invulnerability for variant attacks. And then Wolf and Demolition and Raid get a forward guard point for non-variant attacks. So it seems like the main goal with Waker here is just giving it more survivability. So that is all of the adjustments, but there is one more thing that they add at the end here is that all of us will be getting and reset all skills for each of our characters. So if you haven't made the free three characters yet, I would do so as each of them will be getting that reset pass. And then you could just put it into your storage and transfer it to your main character or whenever you want to use it. Let me know what you guys think of all these adjustments. Does there need to be more? Does there even need to be nerfs for some of the weapons or classes? Let me know in the comments down below. But I'll see you guys in the next NGS video. Peace.